How's it going, Reef Keepers? As you can see, the tank is doing quite well today. Going into the weekend, I uh, definitely got to do some uh, scraping of the back glass. Got some general maintenance to perform, but uh, yeah, everything's looking plenty happy. But today, not really looking to talk about the tank itself, not the display at least. Uh, I want to go over how I am dosing Kalkwasser to my tank. And I have a couple videos out about the Kalkwasser reactor that I DIY'd. However, uh, those videos I really rushed through because I was still going for, you know, whatever. Production value, trying to capture the audience and keep them invested. And as you guys know, as I've progressed with YouTube, I'm just like, I'm not really interested. And if somebody doesn't want to pay attention to a 15 or 20 minute video, then whatever, have fun. I mean, go watch TikTok. So uh, I'm going to go over this at my own pace and kind of explain the long and the short of how I created this DIY reactor, how it functions, like things that I recommend for upkeep. Like I'm going to really get into it. So um, this reactor, by the way, credit where credit is due, it is based on a reactor that Devon at Reef Dudes ran for a short while, but I adapted the reactor to not require what I will call like pass through ATO dosing. So normally with a Kalkwasser reactor, you would have like a spout right here on the side. Your ATO would pump water into the reactor and then it would overflow and naturally the Kalkwasser solution would come out and dose into your tank, right? That's why some people have a Kalkwasser reactor sitting inside their actual sump so it can just spill over and, and dose directly. I don't have a big sump, right? Like you guys can see my sump over here, it just doesn't have a whole heck of a lot of room and I've got plenty of other things, <laughs> plenty of other things that I would rather have in that sump. So I was looking for a different solution. I really wanted to dose Kalkwasser. I didn't want to have like a bar big barrel of calc sitting next to the tank because again, like between RODI equipment, you know, my whole dosing and, and RODI and saltwater bin area, and then the tank itself, like I'm taking up a big portion of my living room already. I'm not looking to get any more angry eyes from my wife. <laughs> so I was like, all right, how can I squeeze a Kalkwasser reactor into this area? And how can I also make it so that it is not like a pass-through ATO calc dosing situation, right? Now keep in mind, if you do go this direction, what it means inherently is that you are never gonna get the true absolute maximum dose of calc to your tank because if you do go the ATO pass-through method on a calc wasser reactor, you're dosing as much water, as, as much calc solution, which is just water mixed with calc, as your tank requires to replace evaporation in the course of a day. So essentially that's, you want the, you know, as long as you have a tank that has enough coral in it to call for maximum Kalkwasser dosing, the ideal situation is that you're gonna dose as much calc solution in a day as your tank evaporates in water volume to get the maximum amount. So what I did, was I watched how much my tank uh, evaporated in the course of a day, basically how much water came out of my ATO reservoir in the course of a day, which was just about 2,400 milliliters. And that's what I set this to. Some days it might dose, or it might uh, evaporate a little more. Some days it might evaporate a little less. I don't really seem to have any problems with too much being dosed to the tank in the course of a day. At, when I set this at 2,400 milliliters of dosing, so I just dose 2,400 milliliters of calc solution from this little Versa right here every day. So here's how I went about it. Now that you have the whole backstory and my thought behind what I needed. So I saw Devin's, uh, Devin's DIY reactor and I was like, all right, how do I achieve doing this without that ATO pass through? And what I did was I used this, I'll, t I'll pop the top off this for a second. I used this tiny little uh, ATO called an Auto Aqua ATO Light. Okay, 
So I use this Auto Aqua ATO light and the sensor, as you can see where I just put it right here, goes just cut like an, an inch, inch and a half below the top of what, what was an Aquamax DC-2 container. So Aquamax, well really BRS, discontinued the DC-2 chamber. However, I did find on eBay, like a Chinese company that produces just acrylic containers for aquarium use. And there's one just like this on there. You can get them in whatever size fits you. Uh, one liter, liter and a half, two liters, 2.5, 3, 3.54, I think all the way up to five. And they're actually cheaper than the DC2. So that's where I would recommend. I just go to eBay and type in dosing container for reef tank, something of, along those lines, or aquarium dosing container. It'll come up. They're pretty popular. So um, you'll be able to find one. And what I've used at the bottom for stirring is a magnetic stirrer. And this particular model is, I believe, called the Lab Fish, like a science lab, and then like literally a fish, Lab Fish, all one word, MS-5, the five meaning uh, it is five inches across on the plate. And that's plenty of room for like, you know, a pretty a fairly heavy duty dosing container that you're using as a reactor chamber, right? So after this, <clears throat> after I had kind of the core of it together, I did notice that Devin had mentioned that he was get his little magnetic pill, because there's a little magnetic pill that you drop down in here. And when the magnetic stirrer is activated, that magnetic pill will spin. And that is what stirs the calc and saturates the water, right? Devin had mentioned that his little magnetic pill was carving out a little, a little notch in the bottom of the soft plastic at the base of this chamber. So what I did was order a, I just went on eBay and there are glass makers on eBay. You can use really any kind of piece of rounded glass find something at the dollar store, like a little mirror. I think that's what Devin did. But I actually ordered a little piece of glass, just a round piece of glass that I submerged in here. So it sits on the bottom. The pill spins on top of the glass. Nothing gets worn away. And it constantly, it doesn't constantly, but anytime you want it to, you know, spin and keep things moving, it will. However much you program it for. What I do is I programmed this thing to go off for 10 seconds every three hours. So that, that little pill in there, at about 25% speed, just spins for 10 seconds every three hours, okay? Simultaneously, I have hooked up to the same outlet on my EB-832 for my Apex controller. Simultaneously, the eight, that little mini ATO that I just showed you, also activates this is the inline that comes from my ato reservoir so during that 10 seconds that i am stirring the calc powder the ato also just spits in through this tube at the top right here and fills back up the reactor so no matter how much has come out of the reactor in the last three hours i dose real heavy at night with calc no matter how much has come out in the last three hours, that 10 seconds is enough for that little ATO to just fill it right back up to where it was, which is great. And I even added to this a uh, pinpoint pH probe just so that I would know if there was a nosedive. Like it maxes out. So, I mean, it basically hovers at like 12.3 pH or whatever because the calc raises the pH so much in the solution. I basically know that if it goes, you know, low at all, like for some, there's something wrong, like the stir plate isn't activating or the magnetic stirrer got stuck or something. Okay. And that is one thing to note. Now I never run out of calc in the course of a week. I just dump everything out and put new calc in once a week as part of my general maintenance. You can see the line of calc powder in the bottom. I put uh, a one third cup scoop of calc washer into this thing once a week 
and I never run out of calc powder. I mean, by the end of the week, it'll be reduced down, you know, close to the bottom. You know, I have a few milliliters of calc powder left that have not, you know, um, gone into solution. But it has worked out great for me. And I use, and I would recommend, a continuous duty doser, right? Whatever continuous duty doser you prefer. I had this Versa. It's fine. Unfortunately, it's only Bluetooth because Aperture doesn't care about adding features to anything because um, they don't care about us. But it works. You know, I'd get something that you could, you know, connect to Wi-Fi, uh, especially for the price of some of the better reputation uh, continuous duty dosers. But I would recommend a continuous duty doser for it. And I've got, you can see the dosing line is right there, this guy. And that dosing line actually comes down to about here. So about midway down the chamber body. I hang that. That's twofold for two purposes. One, at night when this thing's dosing heavy, it'll get down to about, it'll use up about this much of the chamber. And I know that that dosing line will hang a little bit below that, so I'm never pulling dry. Two, uh, when this magnetic pill stirs in here, obviously it's gonna thrust Kalkwasser powder back up. And I've got the doser to go dead after a stirring event for like 10 minutes to allow all the particulates to settle. The thing is, it's always going to pick up some. And you can see in the line here, like <clears throat> the line is, you know, you can see it's clear. It's definitely pulling and pushing calc through. Um, but it's always going to pick up a little bit. I clean the lines out on this thing maybe once a year. Um, you know, I've done it like once. So, and it wasn't even blocked. However, you want to minimize the amount of calc powder that's gathering in your lines. To minimize it, I would hang your dosing line that's going to pull out about midway down. Um, and that way it's not close to the, the storm of Kalkwasser powder that occurs down in the bottom. Um, however, the costing of this stuff. So on Amazon, for one of those chambers I mentioned earlier, since you can't get a DC-2 anymore, I would say... What was it? 50 bucks, I think, um, for like a 1.5 liter or 2 liter. I can't remember. I should have pulled up the link, but it's quite cheap. Um, on par, and I think a little bit less, actually, than the, than the Aquamax line. And then the magnetic stir plate, which comes with a pill, uh, that was 40 bucks, 39.99 on Amazon. Um, pH probe from Pinpoint, I think it got on sale for 29.99. Um, that little, you can get go on AliExpress and get this little uh, Auto Aqua ATO light for like 50 bucks, right? And then of course, I'd recommend finding a cheaper and more feature capable option than stuff that Aperture offers, especially Versa. Um, it's kind of buggy and it only connects over Bluetooth, which is not the most fun. Uh, but, you know, I, that was 200 bucks. Um, I'm sure you can find something more cost effective uh, if not more feature rich. So, you know, your continuous duty doser is going to be up to you, but the actual, you know, everything involved with the actual, um, you know, like DIY calc reactor itself is really not that much money. And frankly, the only compelling, the only thing I would, re I would drift toward as opposed to DIY might be the like build it yourself kit that a vast, uh, the vast marine works, um, sells. So they sell their calc reactor in a kit format that you assemble on your own. People said it wasn't that hard. It just took a while, you know, you got to do it carefully, but that's a pretty great deal. I'm actually really impressed because they have a calc reactor that's, you know, quite, uh, quite reputable. And it's really cool that they're like, Hey, you know, if you want to cut the price down quite a bit, like, we'll just send you the pieces, you put it together, saves us the manufacturing cost, and you can get our reactor for way cheaper. That's cool of them. I hadn't seen something like that before. Maybe maybe other companies do it. Um, but outside of that, I haven't really found a cheaper way to do calc um, out of a reactor. And I certainly have not found another way besides this way that I came up with to use this little uh, ATO um, 
in combination with a continuous duty doser to keep this reactor full and moving all the time uh, and not need to have that ATO pass through function, right? Because that was really going to be a no-go for me. My other, my other option was going to be to drill into the side of this, have a little spout that came off of it, drill a hole down low here, drill a hole in the side of my tank stand just above my sump level, have the water running through it, and I was just like, this is not going to work. I can't do this. I'm not going to dose calc this way. So anyway, this is what I came up with. Um, for the record, the lid on this thing, I did take a drill with just a regular drill bit and just drilled the sizes exactly that it needed to have these tubes go through it, to have the, the probe go through it. It's super easy. This is super soft uh, plastic. It is not, I mean, it's good quality plastic. It's nice and thick, but it, it, it's like no resistance to you taking a drill to it. So pretty simple. Um, and then I do run, you can see the line goes up and it actually comes out here. It goes up my light cord channel and I actually dose into the overflow box because I have found that that is the most uh, turbulent area of the tank. And I have found absolutely no like calc buildup, calc uh, precipitate or whatever it's called on any of my gear down here, even in the box where it comes out, um, where the overflow pipes lead. I've had no problems with buildup or encrusting or anything. I hear people talk about how their equipment is like, you know, struggling with calc and, you know, I'm getting all this line down in my sump and I got to chip it off of there like I'm chipping ice and I've had none of that problem. So I really recommend that dosing line drop into the overflow box. I think that works really well personally. Um, everybody's different, but uh, yeah, it is. I mean, as you can see, this whole reactor setup is totally shoved off to one side but it's pretty small. I mean, it is like not obtrusive. Um, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't get in my way, stays completely off to the side, just doesn't need to be like a big setup that you have to account for and take special consideration for, or, you know, do all this finagling to your system and run lines and like, this is all pretty self-contained. Like this is the whole deal right here. And I really like that about it. And I've had this thing running for months and months and months and months. Um, the only real maintenance besides just dumping out the old calc solution once a week and just dumping in a new third cup of calc. The only maintenance that I do is that if I remember, I usually do it a couple times a month. You will get a slight see how you can see some of this build up on here I'll just take my fingernail and just scrape the sensor on the front I mean I haven't scraped it lately and it's pretty clean it, it stays pretty clean honestly but just so that you know and that's part of the reason why you have a 10 second runtime like I I want to minimize the risk of this thing ever overflowing so you know every three hours for 10 seconds if it overflowed it would be a tiny tiny amount if any um, but to, to minimize the risk of it, I just scrape it with my fingernail. But honestly, guys, it stays pretty clean. Um, I'm surprised how clean that thing stays. And yeah, that's like a couple times a month. When you remember it, give it a scrape with your fingernail and it's going to be fine. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, about for a DIY solution to save yourself money and to not require that ATO pass through. This is like about as cheap and easy as I could come up with. I'm not some brilliant dude. I'm pretty decent with consumer technology and repurposing it, you know, for to meet my ends. But, uh, you know, if anybody else has tips for it or has a better way that they found, I'm always eager to hear it. <laughs> I would love to build something new that does this better. Um, but for right now, this is working. So been plenty happy with it. If you guys have questions about it, please by all means, let me know. Um, would be more than happy to answer questions and, you know, address any concerns people have with building their own. All right, guys, have a good one.